We started with prompts. We then explored prompt chains. Now it's time to put it all together into an agentic workflow. All of these prompts, tools, libraries, AI agents, and chatbots are completely worthless if they don't help you solve a real concrete problem. Let's look at one of the many unexplored use cases you can use agentic workflows for to drive valuable end results. So here's a simple blog post. You can see we have a big H1, we have a couple P's, we have a small list here, and then we have a table. But of course, this is not a normal blog. The data that drives this table is built entirely off an agentic workflow that updates by itself without intervention. Let's go ahead and nuke some data so I can show you exactly what this looks like. So I'm gonna remove the Claude 3.5 Sonnet row from this table and our agentic workflow will notice that there's a new model that hasn't been captured and it will re-add it. So I'll move over to the data set and I'll remove Claude 3.5 Sonnet. This is the JSON row that is populating this table. And now you can see we don't have that row, it's completely missing. So now we're in the state right before Anthropic announced Claude 3.5 Sonnet. So now let's go ahead and run this agentic workflow and then we'll discuss exactly how it works. So you can see it's opening up every page, it's doing the scraping, it's running the retrieve step, it's running the trigger step, it's running the agentic step. And we're gonna break these steps down in just a second including the notifications that you see on the screen. That's my mobile device right here. And that's gonna be one of the critical steps of this agentic workflow. We need to know when something important happens. If we're by our primary device or if we're out, we need to know what's going on with our workflows. Right now we are running our agentics. These are our prompts, our AI agents, our flows. You can see there, we detected a change and now we have a brand new notification. I can also open up these notifications on my device here. And you can see here we have a new model, Claude 3.5 Sonnet has been added to Anthropic's lineup with an input cost of three, an output cost of 15. So this is awesome, right? This happened automatically. I was notified right on my device. This is one of my favorite notification tools. This is called NTFY, also pronounced as just notify. And it's a really, really clean, simple HTTP based pub sub notification service. Definitely check this out. I'll leave a link in the description. But I think this is one of the crucial steps of building out agentic workflows, which we're going to talk about in just a second. I think there's a flow to this. I think there are specific steps that I keep seeing as I keep building out these workflows. And in this video, I want to share them with you and walk through this code a little bit to really show off how you can build agentic workflows end to end. So let's go ahead and hop back to the site and actually see that change. So you can see we now have that Claude 3.5 Sonnet back in our table. The data driving this table, the data driving this blog automatically updated it. And it's all thanks to this full complete agentic workflow. This is where the channel's going. This is a piece of the future that we have been gnawing at video after video, building software that works for us while we sleep. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Let's see how it works. I manually kick this workflow off. How this will actually work is it'll be scheduled just like this and it'll run over and over and over. So let's go ahead and just kick this off while we discuss this. This is just gonna be running in the background. So imagine you have an agent farm that is just running arbitrary agents for you. It has, you know, five, 10, 15 different agentic workflows that operate on your behalf in the background while you're going about your day. This is one of the key steps of the agentic workflow we're gonna break down. This is the trigger step. So you can see here, I'm using this simple Python library called Schedule. It's very, very clean, simple, and easy to read. You can see every 10 seconds, I'm running a test job and test job is just going to print. And every minute, I'm gonna run the real prompt chainable for LLM prices. This is the full workflow that we started building in the previous video. You can see the workflow just got kicked off again. It's been one minute. So our agentic workflow is automatically kicking off. It's running the triggered step, it's running the retrieve step, and now it's running our agentics. This is where it's running prompt chains on the scraped data. 
and it's making the decision whether there are any new models on any one of our configured items. And you can see here, it decided that there are no new models detected. There's no summary to write. Our workflow just continues to run in the background here. I think breaking down your workflows into concrete steps is gonna be the most helpful for you. So you can see the first thing that happens is, of course, the workflow gets triggered. Next, we run the retrieve step. This is where you're gonna be pulling in all the information you need for your agentic workflow to run. Sometimes this is gonna be from a database, sometimes it's gonna be from a file. In my case, I need to scrape a couple websites and then operate on the information scraped. So this is my retrieve step. I'm saving this information so that future steps can work on it. So the next step is the agentic step. This is when you're actually running your prompts, your AI agents, your assistants, whatever combination of prompts you've built up, this is where you're gonna run that. So in my case, I'm going ahead and looping through each one of the providers, and this represents a single block here. So we're gonna loop through each provider. We're going to look at the scraped content for that specific provider. So what was the content scraped, for instance, from Anthropic? And then for each one of those, we are going to run this prompt chain. We covered this in the previous video, when to use prompt chains, I'm gonna link that in the description. Definitely check that out. There's a lot of valuable content in that video, including this minimal chainable class that you can use to build out prompt chains that have back references to the outputs of previous prompts. And you can also pass in context to use in every specific prompt. Again, I'll link that in the description. There's a lot of value packed into that last video. So we run our prompt chain. Now after this runs, we're going to have our table results for this specific provider. We then store those results and that completes our agentix step. After that, we now are running the act and notify step. If you are running tools from your agents, your act and agentix step will be intertwined. You can also notify directly from your agents. I like to separate these steps out. I'm just running prompts and then after that, I'll operate on the results. And now I'm looking for changes detected. So I have this function that detects if something changed between the new scraped values that you can see are getting scraped right there from OpenAI, and then the previous results that we already have saved, right? Because that's how we can tell if something has changed, right? We dip it against the previous result. You can use an LLM for this. You can use raw code for this. That's completely up to you and your implementation. I do think over the long haul, more and more code, and we'll talk about this when we go over the five tips for building agentic workflows. I think a trend we're gonna see is as these models progress and as we improve our abilities to operate with models and prompts and prompt chains all the way up the stack, we're going to be writing less code and handing off more of the work that needs to be done to agents. So we get changes detected. This is gonna be a simple Boolean. If it's false, this is just done, right? And we've seen this happen several times here. Uh, no summary detected. That happens if there's no summary detected here by our agents. We summarize the changes if some changes were detected. We're using the incredible Sonnet 3.5 model here just to look to see if there are any changes that are significant. If there are, we go ahead and update our table rows. And then this is really cool. This is where our notify and our commit and push step happens. If we actually detect changes, and we can dig into this prompt. This is not something we talked about in the previous video. So. This prompt is pretty simple. Basically, you give it the previous JSON data, current JSON data, and then we just want a summary of the changes in this specific JSON format, right? So we're looking for this. We want a summary. If there is one, if there's no significant change, just return, you know, true or false. And, you know, again, we're running a prompt that drives the outcome of the application. That's what makes this an agentic workflow. So it's driven by the reasoning of your prompts. After we have our change summary, we then check that variable that's returned again, right from our agent. And if there's a summary detected, we then run our notification, right? That's how we got our notification to our mobile device and any device we have subscribed to this specific notification topic. That's when we got our message there. And then this step is not filled in yet because this code isn't live yet but we have this commit and push step. This is currently unimplemented, but you get the idea, right? Once our agentic workflow detects a change and we push to this file with the change inside of it, we are going to commit and push this to production or you know staging, however your workflow works. We are giving our agentic workflow full control and we're giving it the ability to say, when our agent says we have changes, we go ahead and push those changes up. We let our agent drive that behavior and then that completes 
the final step. Of course, you can see there we're kicking off again. So that's a large part of how this works. Let me just go ahead and work through those individual steps one more time. I think that's the most important thing that can really help you build and drive your own agentic workflows. This is a sequential agentic workflow. So there are predetermined steps that I'm driving my prompts through, that I'm driving the prompt chain through. This isn't a you know group chat conversation or a multi-agent conversation. The common example you've seen is, hey, do some research on this topic and you have you know, four agents with different capabilities and they just run off. This is what I like to call a sequential agentic workflow. So we have predetermined steps for how exactly we want things to work and what exactly we want to have happen, right? So I think there are gonna be different types of agentic workflows all working up to the final type, which is a workflow that is basically prompting you for information and then it goes off and does all the work. That's for a much, much uh, later video. Let's go ahead and look at these steps. So we have the trigger step. This starts your agentic workflow. You hit an API where your scheduler kicks off like we're doing here, right? We have a scheduler that's triggering every n amount of time to start the workflow. A lot of these workflows are gonna be triggered via a you know UI. So that's the most important part, right? Obviously, uh, you need to start the workflow somehow. So that's step one. I think step two is then retrieve. In this example, we are scraping a couple websites to gather information about the models that we want to display on the site, right? So, we, you know, we're looking at uh, Vertex, we're looking at OpenAI, we're looking at Anthropic, just pulling in some information, letting the agents run on that. And then that all gets formatted into the output here, right? But we first need to retrieve information. This will sometimes come from an API, a database, you know, a local file, a message, you know, some type of pub sub or web scraping in this example, right? So this is a retrieve step. I know I've mentioned that I am anti-rag on the channel before, that is true, but for sure there are some cases where you just have so much information that you need to use some type of chunking mechanism. Uh, my advice there is to keep the chunking as simple as possible as the context windows of every model increases and the price goes to zero. And then the next step, right? So of course, this is what really differentiates agentic workflows from just normal code, right? Because at the end of the day, that, that's exactly what this is, right? It's code powered by a reasoning system. And so what we end up doing here, we run our prompts that solve your problem. So this is, you know, your prompts, prompt chains or AI agents. If you're using the assistance API, you're doing that. This is where the tool calling happens. This is where all the magic happens, right? Then we have the act step. This is where we actually act on the information retrieved, calling tools, and this officially completes the task at hand, right? So now we're updating files, we're updating databases, we're updating the API, we're updating the UI, et cetera, right? In our case, we are updating this file here, right? This is the end result. This is the action that is caused by the workflow. So we're getting these clean rows for our blog. Then we have a learn step. So I'm not gonna dig into this too much here. Um, this is a topic for another video. This is where your prompts and your agentic step, this is where it learns. So my workflow does not have a learn step. This is where your agent self improves. We're gonna have several videos on this. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of gloss over this step for now because this is pretty advanced stuff that uh, I'm still exploring and many engineers and researchers are still exploring. Uh, so then we have the notify step, right? So this is the notification you saw. I think it's really important to be plugged into your agentic workflow. When something happens, you want to know what's happening and you want to be able to observe when it's doing the right thing, when it's doing the wrong thing so that you can come in, improve your workflow or teach your workflow how to improve. You just need to be aware of the results of this system just like you would any system. Nothing special there. So that's the steps for the sequential workflow. So that's what that looks like, right? And let me open this up. So you first trigger your workflow to get it kicked off. You retrieve any information you need to run, your prompts, your agents, etc. You then run your agentics. This is the key step. You then act on that information. You act on the results of your agents. You then learn if there's anything that your agents need to learn from that run cycle, from that iteration, and then you notify, right? And this is where you're alerting yourself. This is where you're making sure you're logging and making sure that this information of this agentic step can be easily attainable. For this workflow, I built out this simple system where I have the outputs running and it just uses, you know, a date time stamp and it contains all the information I need to look back at the individual runs. So here we can see the model pricing output for this one, even if it wasn't used and pushed to production. We can also see the scrape results. We can see the prompts that were being built 
for each provider. We looked at a lot of this in the previous video. Again, refer to that to dig into more detail of what exactly we stored here. But I think it's really important to have a full built out logging system you can dig into. I'm using some really basic file logging here because it gets the job done fast. So I think this is a good breakdown of the sequential agentic workflow steps, right? Trigger, retrieve, run your agentics, act on the results of your agentics, update your AIs with any important information that will help them improve then you notify yourself, you notify the builder, you notify and you log the results. So last thing I wanna talk about in this video, I wanna give you five quick tips for building out these agentic workflows. The first thing that comes to mind is be incremental. Start with the bare minimum prompts, start with the fewest abstractions, the fewest layers, and then slowly give your agents more abilities and autonomy, slowly build up the prompt chain, slowly make it more complicated, give your agents more tools over time. Really, really start simple. This is the fastest way to get some real results. Second tip, I mentioned this before, but use great logging and notification. I think it's really, really important to have a tool like Notify that you can you know, easily alert yourself, easily alert you know, any other engineers that you're working with and, and just really keep track of your system because how will you improve your system if you don't know the outputs and you can't debug it, right? So great monitoring leads to great debugging and system level understanding. Uh, don't skip this. I, I highly recommend running the state of the art models first. Uh, don't try to chimp out on anything that um, isn't just the best when you're building out these agentic workflows. If you're really trying to drive valuable business results, just start with the best. And if you can, then slowly replace your models with cheaper models over the long term. I've mentioned this before on the channel, but all the costs of these prompts, of all the great high class models, the cost of all this stuff is going to zero. It's all getting commoditized. So you wanna be using the best tool for the job and just getting used to the capabilities available to you. All right, uh, LLMs are just functions. It's important to engineer your agentics as you would any other function, right? When it's time to call your agentics, when it's time to test, when it's time to maintain these systems, it's just a string in, string out function. I think as epic and as awesome as these tools are, I think it's important to keep that in mind, right? Underneath all of it, you have a black box where a string goes in and a string goes out. All right, so build for tomorrow. This kind of loops fully back to tip one, be incremental. Over time, you should be giving your agents more abilities and autonomy and writing less code. I do think that in the end, you'll find yourself writing less code and giving more tasks and work to your agents. I think this will take time. I think we're gonna to have to build a ton of agentic workflows which is exactly what we're gonna be doing on this channel. But I think we will get there over time. We're gonna be writing less code. We're gonna be doing less of the individual lines. And instead of using you know, conditionals and if statements and loops and all this stuff, we're going to give those capabilities to our agents and they're gonna do it for us. So that's where we're at. Let me know what you think about my five tips here for building agentic workflows. Do you agree? Do you disagree with any of these? You know, Let me know what you think about the sequential agentic workflow steps. These are getting built out more and more. Not a ton of people are building out full end-to-end -end agentic workflows. This is where we're going on the channel. This is what it's always been about. There are a lot of cool stop gaps on the way, but to me, this is the killer use case for this incredible technology. We're building out living software. We're writing and building things that builds on our behalf while we sleep. And the auto-updating blog, the auto-updating table here is one of many first examples and pieces of living software we can build that uh, we're just getting started with. So you can see there, uh, you know, still auto updating thanks to the scheduler. That's it, that's a full circle here. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Sub, comment, like, and I will see you in the next one.